Can you confirm, Sarah, that we're live now? Uh, yes, we are now live, Chair. Sorry, there was just a slight delay there. That's fine. Thank you. Uh, I will ask each person present to confirm that they can hear and be heard. Uh, where practicable, please also have your video switched on. We have the following members of the forum. Uh, do we have Alison Banner? No, Alison. No. David Bennett. Yes, Chair, I can see and I can hear. Christine Bryan. Thank you. Alex Davis. Seen Alex. Hi. Morning. Morning. Paul Deneen. Yes. Can you can you confirm you can hear us, Paul, and we can hear you? You're you're on mute. You're on mute. Yes, I can hear and see you. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. Nikki Emmett. Hello. I heard Nikki. Uh, Richard Foster. Good morning. Yes, I can hear as well. Morning, Richard. Nikki Gilbert. No, Nikki. Andy Gosling. No. Georgie Griffin. We've got Georgie. Yes, Chair, I can hear and see Thank you. you. Thank you. Ed Gwillem. No. Sue Jenkins. Yes, I can see and hear you. Thank you. Paul Jennings. Paul's here. Uh, yes, I can see and hear you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Steve Kendrick, we think possibly late arrival. Tim Knapp, I've seen Tim. Good morning, everyone. I can see and hear you. Thank you. Tracy Neal. Yes, my chair, I can see and hear you. Thank you, Tracy. Chris Lewandowski. Chris is here. Yes, I can see and hear everyone, and good morning to you all. Thank you. Rose Lloyd, uh, I've seen Rose. Good morning. I good can see and hear you all. Um, Andrew Teal, I've seen Andrew. Hi, everyone. Yep. Um, Morning. Sheila yeah. Taylor, I think, did we just have a message from Sheila? Yeah. Sarah? She can see. Uh, yes, she, yeah. she can't hear us at the, at the moment. She's just trying to sort out her, uh, her technology. And myself. And we have apologies from Sean Lyons, I believe. <clears throat> um, we also have the following officers in attendance. We have Sarah Buffery as clerk. Malcolm Green, uh, Strategic Finance Manager. Les Knight, is Les here? Head of Additional Needs? Yeah, yeah I can see and hear you. Thank you, yeah. Les. And Liz <clears throat> Parr, uh, Service Director, Education, Skills and Learning. I've seen Liz. Good Green. morning, everyone. I can see and hear. Thank you. Thank you. And I think we also have in attendance uh, Diana Toynbee. Yes, hi, good morning, everyone. It's good to see you. Yes, I can mm -hmm. hear and see you. Thank you. Thank My you. ward is unfortunately being flooded so I oh. might be in and out okay thanks. all right okay thank you uh Diana um and uh, do we have councillor Kath Hay no apologies from her apologies from Kath Hay okay thank you thank you everyone um the agenda papers and other relevant information for this meeting are available for public viewing on the Herefordshire Council website the Council is streaming this meeting live in the Herefordshire Council YouTube channel and a recording will be available via the Council's website shortly after the meeting has concluded. Others are permitted to film, photograph and record our public meetings provided that it does not disrupt the business of the meeting. Please use the raise hand icon to indicate that you wish to speak and please remember to lower your hand again after you've spoken. Where forum members are required to vote on an item, we will conduct an electronic vote. If there are problems with the electronic vote, I will ask each member in turn to indicate verbally if they are for, against or abstaining. If a forum member has not been present for the whole of the discussion on an item due to technical failure, they should not vote on that item. Um, are there any questions about the procedures before we continue with the agenda? 
Thank you. Okay, so uh, we've item one. Are there any other um, apologies for non attendance today, Sarah, from anybody? Uh, no, I believe it's uh, it's as we've advised. Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, Thank John you. And... So item two, are there any named substitutes attending today's meeting? Yes, so we have Andrew Teal for Shine Lines today. Thank you. Item three, are there any declarations of interest today? No. Thank you. So item four, are there any matters arising not dealt with elsewhere on the agenda? No. Uh, if you were not present at the last meeting, you should select the abstention if you wish to vote. Uh, is there any need to vote, Clark? Uh, yes, we do just need to agree those um, those minutes, Chair, yeah. but as indicated, anyone who wasn't present at the last meeting um, can abstain at the vote. So if we could bring up the voting screen. That should be on screen for everyone now. Uh, and if you can vote and make sure you press the submit button. Uh, thank you, Chair. Those have been approved. OK, thank you, everyone. So item five is the school's budget 2023-24. So this is to agree the final budget proposals for recommendations to the Cabinet Member for Children and Families for School Budgets for uh, Central School Services and Early Years within the dedicated schools grant. I'd like to call on Malcolm to present uh, the report to us and the, all the relevant information. Right. Uh, thank you, Cathy. I'll just share my screen uh, with everybody. Right. Uh, I have a short slideshow, which uh, I hope everybody can see on screen. Um, this will give a summary of the main sort of uh, process we followed and the main points uh, from the formal reports. Uh, the papers are very detailed and there's a lot of information contained within them. Uh, and there is also a copy of a supplementary report from the Budget Working Group, which in broad terms supports the proposals I'm going to uh, present this morning. Um, I'll go through the first presentation for the school budget and then I'll take uh, any questions uh, before we consider the recommendations. Uh, I'd like to just start by going back to the school's consultation paper that was issued uh, in October, uh, which basically set out uh, our proposals for the 23-24 schools budget. And it suggested that we would have enough funding to implement the national funding formula in full and be able to transfer uh, the 0.5% to the high needs block to support the SEN protection scheme that has been important to us over the last few years. Uh, the final DSG was published on the 16th of December by the DFE. Our schools block for 23-24 is 123.2 million. That includes the consolidation of the supplementary schools grant from this year, uh, and that has been rolled into the, uh, <clears throat> the schools block at the per pupil values given to schools. Uh, as far as our forecasts were concerned, we had 18 fewer pupils than I expected and 79k less in income. Uh, but the really important things I wish to draw to schools forums attention is the fact that because of the census figures from the October PLASC census, uh, the number of free school meals has gone up by 4.3%. The number of English as an additional language pupils, which is mostly Ukrainian pupils, has gone up by 26%. 
and that has had a significant financial knock-on effect on our costs. Uh, the free school meal pupils has gone up by £330,000. EAL costs have gone up by £211,000. The minimum funding guarantee has gone up by uh, 291000 uh, Because all schools now are on the national funding formula, I've not been able to cap winners, and so that has cost me another 250000 uh, There are some savings compensation from other factors in the formula, but overall, there's a net increase of £900,000 uh, to my proposals that were circulated in the draft in the consultation paper in the autumn. The implications of that are quite significant in that it means we do not have enough money to fully fund the national funding formula, and neither do we have enough money to transfer to the high needs block uh, without uh, some uh, further options and proposals and actions being taken. I presented three options to the budget working group a week ago. Option A was to trim the national funding formula by 0.26%, uh, and that would mean the end of the SEM protection scheme. Option B was to trim the national funding formula by 0.5%, and that would mean a much smaller SEM protection scheme that would either be a quarter to a half size, depending on whether funding could be found in the high needs block uh, to contribute. And we won't know that until March. Uh, so that is too late to decide today. Uh, and option C uh, is to trim the national funding formula by 1%. Uh, which would allow the SEM protection scheme to continue in 23-24, much as this year in 22-23. Option C is the preferred option of the council, and it was also supported uh, unanimously by the budget working group. Uh, and just out of interest, so members know, uh, the forecast spend of the SEM protection scheme this year is 700000 and it's projected to go up to at least 750,000 next year. I have taken soundings from other counties uh, of our family comparators in the Southwest, uh, and a good number of them are also in exactly the same position as Herefordshire in that they do not have enough money to fully fund the national funding formula. Uh, and they are also looking at trimming uh, by anywhere from 0.2% to 0.4%. So of those who responded, which was half a dozen, um, they are all in a similar position to Herefordshire. Uh, and that is not surprising because the DFE set the DSG calculations uh, way before July uh, and I guess it's done with the Treasury from April onwards. So it's not surprised that the increased costs of the census have led to uh, a slight shortfall. Uh, the DfE have announced, though, a similar additional grant for 23-24 for schools, which is similar to the supplementary grant that schools have received uh, for 22-23. Uh, for next year, 23-24, uh, uh, we know that schools in Herefordshire will receive 4.15 million in additional to the national funding formula, and that is up by 25% on the 3.3 million in the supplementary grant that schools have received this year. Uh, we haven't um, received final details from the DfE yet, but if we apply the 25% increase uh, to the 22-23 values, that would give schools a approximately £120 extra per primary pupil and 170 to 190 for secondary key stage three and key stage four. Uh, what is important and what we went through with the budget working group was by comparison with option C, um, if you take the 4.15 million extra grant we're going to receive, take off the transfer that we are proposing to the high needs block of 0.61 million, that leaves just over 3.5 million extra in 23-24, uh, 
uh, <clears throat> which compares favorably with the 3.3 million in 22-23. Uh, so that is a 7% increase uh, that schools will get on the extra grant uh, when you take off the 1% uh, trim uh, to the national funding formula, which will move the money to the high needs block to support the SEN scheme. That is an important, that was an important discussion point and consideration of the budget working group. Uh, I'll just like to give forum a reminder of the SEN protection scheme. Uh, it's usually supported by schools in previous years. In previous years consultations, uh, many, most of the schools uh, supported the continuation of the scheme. It funds the extra £6,000 threshold costs for pupils with high needs for schools with uh, greater than average numbers of high needs pupils uh, and 2.7% of roll is the average um, when the threshold, when the uh, protection scheme kicks in. Uh, there are nine high schools and 44 primary schools who receive funding through this scheme. The maximum primarily receives just short of 73,000 for 6% of pupils with top up funding on roll. And the maximum high schools receive just over 71,000 for 4.9% of pupils on roll. Uh, without the scheme, uh, we strongly believe uh, there will be a significant impact on those most inclusive schools and the high needs deficit is likely to uh, increase uh, significantly. Uh, I do need to say to Forum that we are now at the maximum 0.5 transfer that we are allowed uh, by the DFE that Schools Forum can approve. Uh, and given the forecasts I've made to the SEM protection scheme, uh, the budget work, I'll have to work with the budget working group to consider how we take the SEM protection scheme forward for 24 25 uh, in any case, uh, and that will take time to think through um, what we should do. One of the options, uh, should we so wished, might be to apply to the Secretary of State uh, for a greater than 0.5% transfer with school forums agreement, uh, but it will all depend on the funding we get uh, for 24 25 nearer the time. Uh, the budget working group considered the options in detail. Uh, their report was circulated separately to forum. Uh, we discussed the three options, and as I said, they supported the, the supported option C, which is the continuation of the transfer to the high needs block, which has been the existing practice for at least the last five years. Uh, abolishing the scheme would be counterproductive and lead to an increase in the DSG deficit. Uh, the budget working also received an update on the nurture group projects uh, and they were pleased with the progress and would like to see it extended further if funds permit. Um, at this point, uh, if Paul has got enough bandwidth, perhaps uh, as chair of the budget working group and ask Paul Jennings to, to say a few words and perhaps add anything that I might have missed. Is that OK, Paul? <clears throat> yes, thank you, Malcolm. I mean, uh these are less than ideal circumstances, as, as we all know. Um, and we had a, a good discussion at Budget Working Group where we looked at the, the three models, but it became clear very quickly, actually, that option C was, was the preferred model um, and actually would involve a significant U-turn in, in what we've been trying to do with the SEM protection scheme for the last few years if we didn't go for option C. The only thing, Malcolm, that, that you didn't mention was the fact that that we agreed that actually we would ask you to present at the um, school leaders forum this week, um, where uh, the plan was was shared with school leaders. And it's fair to say that there, there hasn't been a, an overwhelming feeling that this isn't the right option to take. Um, so I think it's fair to assume that, that the school leaders who were um, uh, privy to this information in that forum would agree that option C is the, the sensible way to go because of the benefits that it brings with the, the SEM protection scheme. Um, I didn't have any more to add to that, Malcolm, unless you feel that that it's entirely necessary, but I'd just like Schools Forum to, to know that, you know, we did have a, a lengthy discussion and while it's not easy, 
we do feel that option C really is the only sensible way to, to proceed with this. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. Um, I'll just very quickly run through, through the recommendations so that everybody uh, is aware of what's being proposed. Uh, and then uh, um, Kathy will take us through the voting procedure after any questions. Uh, recommendation one is the main recommendation for the school's budget. Uh, it is for option D, it proposes a 1% reduction to the national funding formula, uh, consequent 0.5 transfer to a high needs block of 616,000. Uh, I was, as we've said, supported by the budget working group on the 6th of January and supported by the school's leadership conference on the 10th of January. Uh, recommendation two is the continuation of the growth fund for basic need expansion in the Golden Valley for 30 places for Kingstone High and 10 places for Fairfield. Uh, this is year four of five years expansion. And so uh, after next year, uh, there will be no need for this growth because it will be built into the school's base budgets. Uh, recommendation three is, as I say, the transfer to the high needs protection scheme. Uh, recommendation four, uh, gives uh, Schools Forum authorised me to make minor adjustments of up to 5,000 to balance the budget so that I um, I can submit a properly validated budget to the DFE. Recommendation five sets a largely inflational increase uh, of 1.9%, which doesn't anywhere reflect the current level of inflation uh, on the central services block for services to schools such as admissions, SACRE, uh, and um, the uh, committee ad administration support by Sarah for Schools Forum, 1.9% uh, broadly reflects the increase uh, in funding we got for the central services block. Uh, recommendation six, which is for local authority school members to vote on only, uh, is on the de-delegation proposals. Uh, and we have applied the same 1.9% increase on all of the de-delegation proposals, apart from new items, uh, which uh, are a 6% per pupil for school improvement due to the DFE re, uh, abolishing the school improvement grant we used to receive and a 1% contingency cost to build up a fund to pay for unexpected costs such as employment tribunal costs. Uh, those New proposals are much reduced from what we put out to consultation, and we have reflected on the responses we got in the consultation uh, and reduced those costs down to uh, a more realistic level. Uh, recommendation seven for early years applies the inflation, the increase given by the DFE, uh, which is 5.64% increase on three and four year old nursery education funding and 1% increase on the two year old nursery education funding. And we've applied the same percentage increase on our central costs for the uh, early years advisors and the contract uh, payment costs um, for three and four year old rates using that inflation rate. Um, Recommendation eight is included in the report at the request of our external auditors who uh, would like to see the fact that we approve a balanced budget uh, and that the unusable reserve is carried forward. This is required by the Secretary of State in any case. However, the audience, the auditors have asked for evidence. So they've asked me to include that in the recommendations. So it provides an audit trail. Uh, just to say the uh, high needs budget is an, it will be an agenda item for the March forum. There's an awful lot of detail. Um, I'm happy to take any questions uh, should anybody want to ask any matters of detail. Uh, Chair, over to you. Thank you, Malcolm, for that um, information. Uh, Chris has um, raised his hand and would like to uh, ask a question. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, Chair. Um, Ten budgets, in particular the Budget Working Group Supplementary Report, uh, paragraphs two and three. Paragraph two looks at the three options A, B and C to do with the SEND Protection Scheme. Paragraph three, 
says the budget working group supports the continuation of SEM protection scheme and feel that removing or significantly reducing the scheme could be counterproductive as it could lead to more pupils needing more expensive specialist places rather than being included in mainstream schools. Now, obviously it is cheaper for special needs pupils to attend mainstream schools. But how many of those special needs pupils deserve or benefit from more specialist places? Who speaks for those special needs pupils in this debate? And that's the question. Thank uh, you. Thank you. Les, was that you? Les, could you, would you like to comment on that? So I, th I think my comment is, sorry, I'm very hoarse today. So um, the, uh, the number of pupils being placed in specialist provision has risen and is rising exponentially, really. So it's not that we are restricting the number of places in specialist, um, <clears throat> specialist placements, but there are children where their needs can be served in both mainstream and special. And the... Um, additional funding that the height protection scheme brings means that mainstream schools are better able to support those pupils for longer in in the mainstream sector and it doesn't provide a disincentive to do that so i think that's that's the real situation so um <clears throat> you know it's not that we are limiting the number of specialist places thank you thank you les uh uh, Chris, uh, does that answer your question? Did you want to? Anybody? It sort of does, but you know, my concern is that a number of pupils may be placed in mainstream schools because of cost, when they will benefit from more specialist places, and someone has to make that decision. <clears throat> someone should be speaking on behalf of those special needs pupils. Okay, thank you. Well, we we've noted that, and um, that might. Uh, I'm sure that will uh, be dealt with in future meetings as well as we uh, monitor the spend and the special needs, the high needs budget. Um, David, could I ask you to make your contribution, please? Uh, yes, thank you. Uh, just to add to Les's comment there, that actually there is a longer term strategy within the authority, uh, as can be seen by the application for a free school for, sp for special children, uh, for special school children. OK, so there is a longer term strategy, it's just not available now. OK, so obviously the, the, the authority is trying to provide extra capacity in this area. Thank you. Uh, Paul Deneen, if I could ask you to make your... Yes. Can, can I support the what's been d decided and discussed? And I mean, what's interesting from my perspective is it's gone to the Budget Working Forum, it's then gone to school leaders, there's been some support. Uh, in my experience, when I talked at, a, um, at the high school uh, as a head of year was that we did everything we possibly could to keep children within mainstream. If it wasn't possible because of issues that they may well have had, then it, we, we needed evidence from specialists, referrals, uh, and, and, you know, sort of... Um, whether there's GPs or education psychologists. So there's an escalation route up there. And uh, at the end of the day, it was what was best for the pupil uh, that was required. So I don't think I, I'm not picking up that there's any attempt not to send people out of out of sort of place out of sort of Herefordshire placement. Um, but I think what is being suggested is that everything should be done to try and keep people within mainstream schools in Herefordshire as far as possible. Um, but you would need to gather significant evidence uh, for a child to be sent into normally case sort of somewhere else mm -hmm. uh, unless there's sort of learning disability issues or particular circumstances. So. Um, Les can I'm sure can reassure us that um, no child will be denied an opportunity to be in the in the right placement and this is not about sort of um, cutting costs to, to not allow that to happen would that be fair to say Les? Thank you Paul. Yeah I mean that, that, that is the case yeah I mean as I say we have lot, lots of placements into specialist provision that you know where that that case has been made but I think the other <clears throat> excuse me the other aspect of this is that um, populations move around the county. So some years, some schools will have very high levels of um, pupils with uh, top-up funding. 
other years they won't and what this does is to smooth that out it, it forms an insurance policy for schools so that the rest of their budget is not hit if uh, they happen to be in a phase when they have very high proportions of um, high needs pupils so so that's another another thing to consider as well as the movement of children from one school to another Thank you, everyone who's contributed and asked further queries. Um, is there anything else? Is, is it, does anyone else have any um, questions of Malcolm or anybody uh, before we move on to voting? Um, <clears throat> Mark, I can't see any hands up. I don't know whether you can. No, I, I don't see any uh, any hands, Chair. OK, so... Thank you, everyone, and thank you to um, Malcolm and Paul Jennings for the uh, clarity of that information. I will now move to the voting on those recommendations we've just heard about. Um, voting on these recommendations is restricted by regulation to school members, academy members and early years representatives only. Those attendees who are not eligible to vote on these recommendations, please abstain in the upcoming polls. The recommendations are grouped into three blocks for voting, unless there are uh, any objections to that. I think Malcolm's given us a lot of detail in there. So vote one is for recommendations one through to five, inclusive, as set out in the report covering school funding values, growth funding, the transfer to the high needs block, approval for minor adjustments and central support services. Please cast your vote and press the submit button. If you cannot see the voting screen or are unable to vote, please raise your hand. Would the clerk please bring up the voting screen? That should be on screens now, Chair. Yes, it is, I, it's on mine. Tracy, do you? Is that uh, I haven't. I haven't got the voting screen. I'm sorry. I'm not sure what's happening. Okay. Okay. Uh, yes. The the other votes have uh, concluded, Chair. Um, did Did you want to indicate, Tracy, were you supporting those recommendations? Can't hear you. You're on mute, Tracy. And me now. Uh, yeah, I I didn't have the earlier uh, voting um screen either so that's fine yes i'm in agreement with those proposals thank you uh, those are carried chair okay thank you everyone um i'll move on now to uh, uh the second vote uh recommendation six as set out in the report covering de-delegation proposals for the year 2023-24 Voting on this item is restricted uh, by regulation to representatives of local authority schools only and further restricted by phase where de-delegation applies specifically to primary or secondary schools. As this is a small number, I will ask the clerk to take the vote by roll call. The recommendation is that local authority maintain schools school members approve the de-delegation of funding in 2023 at uh, sorry 2223 and advise the cabinet member for children's and families as set out in the report would the clerk please take the vote thank you chair um yes as this is only a small uh, subgroup uh, easier just to run through it um, and ask people to uh, indicate if they are um, for or against or abstaining on that uh, recommendation. Um, Can I verbally say for? Uh, <laughs> uh, so um, if I can ask for uh, Alison Banner. Uh, for. Uh, Georgie Griffin. For. Thank you, Georgie. Uh, Sue Jenkins. Oh. Um, uh, Steve Kendrick joined us. I don't don't see him. 
Uh, Tracy Neal? Four. And Cathy has indicated four. Um, so those are supported, Chair. Thank you, everyone. Um, thank you, Clark. <clears throat> Okay, uh, moving on to uh, vote three. This is for recommendations seven and eight as set out in the report covering early years funding and recommendations to the cabinet member for children and families. Voting on these recommendations is restricted by regulation to school members, academy members, early years representatives. Those attendees who are not eligible to vote on these recommendations, please abstain in the upcoming polls. Uh, Clark, if I could ask you to bring up the voting screen, please. That should be on your screen now, uh, Chair. And yes, uh, if, if, if anyone if hasn't got it, I'll, I'll take that verbally once everyone else has cast their vote. Thank you. Uh, voting's concluded. Uh, Tracy, were you able to vote this time? No, unfortunately no, not. Uh, no. so. uh, uh, can I just ask then, are you, are you supporting those recommendations? I am supporting it, yeah. Thank you. Um, that's carried then, Chair. Thanks everyone for that. Uh, that concludes voting on the school's budget 2023-24. So we'll now move on to agenda item six, which is dedicated schools grant deficit management plan. So to approve the dedicated schools grant management plan subject to any amendments prior to its submission to the Department for Education. Um, Malcolm, if I could once again call on you, please, to uh, inform us and present your report. Yes, I'll, uh, I'll probably have, um, I'll probably invite Les to say some uh, words to support this as well as he's, uh, much more up to speed um, with the detail of uh, SEN than myself. I'll share my screen now. Thank you. <clears throat> right. Right, okay, and um, that should be there for everyone to see. Uh, there's a lot more detail in the report, and um, particularly the appendix of the plan. Uh, <clears throat> just to recall that Herefordshire um, slipped into deficit uh, by £275,000 in March 22. Uh, that was after a good number of years where we managed to... Uh, avoid being in deficit, but our surplus slowly went down year on year. Uh, we, on a Society of County Treasurers survey of 51 authorities, um, we were number 48 in size of the deficit. We had the smallest deficit, and there were only three authorities who remained in surplus. Um, so we think we've done very well to avoid uh, a deficit for so long. Um, the plan has been requested by the DFE. Uh, we've taken it through the budget working group who we discussed in detail and they were broadly content with the plan <coughs> as, uh, as written, although we had a, a long discussion about uh, the actions involved. Um, I'm inviting Schools Forum to comment uh, today with any changes they feel uh, are necessary. Uh, however, the first thing to say is that the government has extended the statutory accounts override to March 2026, which, uh, although it's a mouthful, uh, it has a uh, significant impact in that it means that we uh, can carry forward the DSG deficit for another three years. Uh, and we do not, and the council is not required to fund the deficit. Um, there will be another decision uh, in March 26 by the government about what happens uh, for the next three years uh, in terms of funding the deficit. Uh, for Herefordshire, 
Uh, clearly, the deficit <clears throat> is at the moment is relatively small, and the council would have enough uh, funding in general reserves to be able to meet that cost. The forecasts that we did uh, and have discussed with the budget working group suggest that without <clears throat> the actions proposed in the management plan, that deficit could well rise to £30 million deficit by 2030. Uh, and that is simply extrapolating our deficit in the same way that other counties' uh, deficits have grown. We took the first deficits from 2016 of the larger counties, and a good number of those have now grown to over 100 million for big counties. Uh, so what is quite clear is that once you start incurring costs over and above uh, the funding you've been given by DfE, that deficit rises sharply year on year. Uh, <clears throat> in the deficit plan in the appendix, we set out the history of how what we've done, how we got to a deficit. Uh, there are some graphs which show the numbers of children with uh, education, health and care plans, how that has doubled in since 2014. And we have listed a number of proposals, uh, which is largely about building more capacity for special schools, more capacity for autism hubs, uh, improved training on autism for mainstream schools, and working more closely with our colleagues in the NHS uh, and um, <clears throat> to identify children's needs earlier and do something about it earlier. Um, we do hope that providing more in-county resources and places will avoid as far as possible um, being forced to send children out of county uh, because there's no provision uh, in Herefordshire. Uh, and just to give you a sort of range of costs involved, um, to keep children uh, with relatively minor SEN needs in a mainstream cool school probably costs us about £10,000 a year. A place in a special school is probably twenty-five pounds to £30,000 a year. A place in an independent out-of-county provision will cost uh, at least seventy-five to 100000 And in some cases, for those with complex needs, a, they can be significantly more, 250,000 or more. So the costs multiply significantly as the provision becomes more specialist. Uh, at the moment, all of our special schools are full. And so we have little alternative than to place children out of county. And those costs have gone up in a period of about five years from 400,000 to 3 million. Uh, and if they continue to multiply, then clearly we are well on the way towards a £30 million deficit. Um, very quickly, and I'm sure Les will want to say something to add to this, is uh, we propose increased training for mainstream schools, re-autism. Uh, there will hopefully be new uh, places in a primary and secondary autism hub uh, we are trying to get that in place from September 23, if at all possible. Uh, we have put in to the DfE a capital bid for more places in Herefordshire, uh, special schools. Uh, increasing special school places depends on the capital funding strategy, but it's not a quick solution. Uh, we have uh, introduced nurture hubs and looking to extend those in primary schools. Um, we will look at implementing the DfE send review proposals when uh, we hear more detail from the DfE. We are looking to increase staff in the SEN assessment team. Um, as David Bennett said, we've got long-term planning by the SEN capital strategy and looking for better links with uh, the NHS and social care. Um, 
and we will be taking the deficit management plan to the send strategy board for another discussion um, once it has been submitted to the DFE. Uh, that's probably all I want to say. Uh, I think Les will probably want to amplify uh, some of that or happy to take questions or have a discussion. Um, I'll stop sharing the, the screen now. Okay. Thank you, Malcolm. Uh, Chris has got his hand up before, uh, and we'll take Chris's question before we go to you, Les, if that's okay. Thank you, Chair. Um, my question relates to the new proposed free school and the capital funding bid for it, which is paragraph 25 on page 48. Can you please tell us more about this bid in particular? Do you expect the bid to be successful with the DFE? If so, how large will the school be? How many pupils will it cater for? As this is a free school, who will be responsible for running it and the governance of it? Where is it likely to be located? And what sort of time scale will there be until it is open? If the bid is not successful, is there a plan B? Thank you. Thank right. you. Uh, okay. Yes, <laughs> do you want to um, yeah, contribute um, and answer Chris's questions as well? Yeah. Okay, Chris, I'm getting quite old. Could you do them one at a time, please, for me? <laughs> right. Do you think it's going to be successful? The bid? No, I, um, I have no idea, I'm afraid. I cannot read the mind of right. the DFE, but um, we have put in a thorough bid. Um, we were successful with a similar bid for the Beacon College some a couple of years ago. So we're, ho we're hopeful, but we don't know. It should be, we should be informed fairly soon. Right. If it is successful, um, how large is the school going to be? How many pupils will it take? Yeah, it, we bid for 80. Sort of age range? 80 places, age 2 to 16, with a focus on uh, comorbid learning difficulty and autism. So, and the purpose of that is to um, <clears throat> sort of divide the existing learning difficulty special school population um, into two so that you, you have more specialist response to those different sorts of needs in those schools um, thus and, and thereby in the long run creating more space in the existing special schools so some of the some of the population that is currently served uh, by Bass Court and Westfield and um, Blackmaston um could potentially be served by this new school okay but doesn't mean we'll necessarily move you know um, force pupils to move between schools it, it, it's planned to be a long-term change if that makes sense yeah <clears throat> as the school is going to be a free school who will be responsible for running it and what about the governance of it right so um in order to, uh, you know, be successful with bid, you have to commit to this school being part of a multi-academy trust because that's, you know, the government put the money out there on the con that condition. Um, the uh, what happens is there's a competition to run the school, an open competition, um, as we did with the Beacon College, and uh, that is partly uh, scrutinised by the local authority and partly by the DFE. The governance would be through the, the multi-academy trust. Right, thank you. Uh, where is it likely to be located? Uh, the proposed site is on the piece of land next to Beacon College. That is the most accessible piece of land we have. Right, thank you. Uh, and what will be the time scale until it was open? Uh, the Beacon College build went very well, despite being in the middle of COVID. Um, and that took, I think, three and a half years from agreement to the bid to it being open. So that's the approximate time scale. So three and a half, four years. Right? Some, something you. like that. Yeah. 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 And if the bid is not successful, is there a plan B? <clears throat> uh, there's several plan B's, but they aren't as comprehensive as obviously having one new school if that makes sense so we have a number of short shorter term projects 
that are being funded by the um, high needs capital grant. We get at the moment we're getting an annual amount from uh, central government to recognise the growth nationally in demand in special needs places, but it's it's not a substantial amount of money. It's not it's it's enough to add a couple of classrooms here and there. And what we would have to do is take a number of smaller projects and that we have those uh, at the feasibility study at the moment. Uh, the earliest any of those will come on stream is September uh, 24. Right, but that's a sort of bits and pieces approach rather than... Yeah, yeah I'm afraid that's a, that is yeah. our only option, yeah. Right, okay. Mm. Uh, Thank you. Thank you, Les, yeah. uh, for that additional information prompted by Chris's questions. Thank you. Uh, Paul Deneen, you uh, have your hand raised. Yeah, thank you very much. The one issue that I've read on the report is, is the education, health and care plans, because um, it's incredibly important that when children are referred, um, that these plans are completed, because there's all sorts of issues otherwise. And I've noted on, I think it's... Um, uh, 40.42 so I, I some reassurance really Les as to I think if it is you or whether it's Liz um, that this is being addressed this has huge implications for individuals and families and I'm looking in there saying the families are upset record levels of complaints this is a right okay can I just put a bit of context around that Paul because yeah. um, yes that that would have been valid last year we had a, a complete um disaster really with the, the SEN team in that we had two long-term absences and two maternities in a kit team of six you know you can see that, that would have uh, uh, coupled with rapidly increasing demand for plans so um, we have taken uh, quite a lot of action the team is now increased as Malcolm says and uh, Liz when she speaks if she does will <coughs> confirm that she is uh, um, taking a very close interest in that and making sure that we are on target um, for this coming year with the phase transfers particularly, which is which are the ones that cause most anxiety where a child is moving school. Um, we uh, Historically, we've, we have issued plans highly successfully. Um, we've been at 90% or above plans to time. It, you know, that, that's a high performance level compared to national. Uh, the national figure is around 53%. We've never dropped below that national figure. Um, but, you know, we want to be, do as you say, serving our population well and, and not creating complaints. Um, so, um, you know, I am <clears throat> hoping, uh, following the work that we're doing, that uh, there won't be any repeat of last year and it will be a lot more successful. What's the time frame for a, a referral to, to completion? 20 weeks. 20 it's weeks. National standard. Yeah, I, I can add to that if I may. Yes. Um, so we recognise the poor performance, as Les has described, um, linked to staffing issues last um, year. Um, I'm pleased to report that um, the statistics around issue of plans are much better now. We remain. It's interesting for for the group to know that although our performance has dipped from that um, historically it nevertheless remains well above that scene nationally and well above that scene um, in the West Midlands. Um, and, and as Les says, in particular, I am scrutinising the timeliness of um, phase transfer annual reviews so we don't see a repeat um, of, of that situation from last year. Overall, um, data tracking systems have strengthened significantly which is supporting my work and I'm meeting on a fortnightly basis with the team to make sure that we keep this um, point of discussion on track to where we want to be. Well done, well that's reassuring. Thank you for that um, both Les and to you Liz. Thank you very thank much. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Paul, can I ask you to remove your... Thank you, you have. Um, OK, uh, before we go to vote on the on this, um, Paul Jennings, do you want, have anything to contribute uh, as the chair of the Budget Working Group? I don't feel you have to, but... Um, no, thank you, chair. I've got nothing more to add at this point. OK, thank you, everyone. Uh, we'll now move... If there are no see, did you, did, Sorry, I, I was going to describe more work that's going on. Sorry, yes, okay, um, carry on. Um, 
So in addition to those medium term projects that we described, we are now conscious that we have yet more increasing demand for September 23. Again, it's increased from the previous year. So, um, you know, we're, and we don't know this until a uh, lot of it, until the annual reviews take place and parental preferences are revealed. Mm -hmm. So there is an increasing demand for specialist places. Um, we are, again, working very hard um, to make sure we're on top of this, but it is a considerable pressure that we're aware of. It's a it's a risk to um, it's a risk to these budgets, and it's a risk for the children concerned. You know, so um, so we are now looking at where we can um, work with uh, schools to provide uh, fairly immediate responses to this. And we have had some success. I mean, I can't confirm where those are because um, they're still subject to very rapid and detailed negotiation. But all I want to say is to thank um, the, the schools and the head teachers concerned for um, being part of the Herefordshire community and, um, you know, putting their hand up and, and offering um, physical space and the willingness to host provision. Some very positive responses have come forward in the last two weeks. So okay. I just wanted to leave it at that, if that's OK. okay. So. Thank you. Anybody got any more queries before we? <clears throat> yeah, well done. <clears throat> OK, so um, the recommendation is that the uh, DSG deficit management plan is recommended to the Director of Children's Services for submission to the Department for Education. Would the clerk please bring up the voting screen? That should be on screens now. Thank Chair. you. Uh, uh, thank you, clerk. For those that can, uh, for those that can see it. Yeah. <laughs> can everybody vote um, for this one, Cathy, or is it that? Uh, I haven't got any restrictions noted. Can you clarify that, please, Clark? Uh, yes, this is open for the forum to uh, indicate its support. Yes. Yeah, everybody. Thank you. That's concluded, Chair, and has been um, supported. OK, thank you. So moving on to agenda item seven, which is local management of schools scheme amendment. The Department for Education has, has advised that the consistent financial reporting guidance does not permit schools to transfer revenue to capital in advance of spend. In order to accommodate this advice, the local management of schools scheme requires amendment to introduce a new category for committed revenue balances and to exclude these balances from the 20% balance clawback scheme for the financial year 2022-23 and future financial years. Local authority maintained schools are asked to approve the changes to the LMS scheme. Um, Malcolm, I believe you have a report for us on this. Uh, uh, yes, I have. Thank you, Cathy. I'll Thank share you. my screen again. Thank you. Right, okay. Uh, this is really, in comparison to the two items we've just discussed, this is really very simple and straightforward. Uh, Cathy's introduction has said most of what needs to be said. Uh, the only thing that I would say is the recommendations on the paper uh, are designed to make it very clear. Uh, my screen's disappeared now. Um, is they uh, all right, that's uh, we've got it back right there we are um the recommendations uh, are for a, a formal change to the LMS scheme which makes it very clear that the twenty percent uh, only applies to uh, uncommitted balances uh, given the economic circumstances of school costs and funding. Uh, then I doubt that um, any school is going to be in the region of keeping more than 20% of revenue balances in any case. Uh, local authority school members are the only ones who can vote. 
Uh, there was an item in spotlight in the autumn uh, saying we were going to do this. I had absolutely nil response from uh, uh, from any from anybody to that suggestion. Uh, the only thing to make clear is that in order to move funds into committed balances, I will require from governors a minute uh, confirming the transfer of how much and what for, uh, and we will ask for that um, towards the end of the financial year, um, every year in order to move in order to move funding into committed balances. Uh, schools will soon get used to the new process, but it might take uh, a year or two before uh, everybody's on board. Uh, following whatever decision there is today, um, we will let schools know uh, in good time for what they need to do uh, before the end of January. Uh, I think it's relatively straightforward. Um, I'll take any questions if, if there are any. Thank you. Thank you, Malcolm. Uh, does anybody, I can't see any hands raised at this point. <clears throat> uh, it doesn't apply to academy schools. No. So just a reminder that that is this voting is restricted uh, to local authority school members. Um, as this is a small number, Clark, uh, would you please uh, take the roll call without the electronic device? Uh, I'm just I just want to reiterate that the recommendation is there's a typo apparently in the report. So uh, the local authority maintained schools members approve the amendment to the local management of schools scheme um, as set out in the report. So if we could take the vote, please, Clark. Uh, thank you, Chair. So just running through um, local authority uh, schools members, um, Alison Banner, can you indicate if oh. you are? Four. Thank four, you. Yeah. Uh, Georgie Griffin. Four. Thank you. Sue Jenkins. Four. Uh, Tracy Neal. Yes, I'm four. Uh, Kathy Weston. I'm four. Thank you. And I, I think if I did I see Nikki Gilbert had joined us. I'm four as well. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, that's carried then, Chair. Thank you, everybody. Uh, that uh, closes our meeting, I think. Um, so thank you to everybody for joining us and for your participation. And um, thanks especially to uh, Malcolm, Sarah, Les, who um, continue to provide us with um, excellent clarity and guidance um, in all our financial matters in schools. Um, and I would just like to wish everybody a happy, a good weekend and um, stay out of floods and high winds. And the next meeting will take place on Friday, the 17th of March, when we'll be heading into spring. So um, look forward to seeing you again then. Thank, Thank you. Well, Kathy, thanks for chairing so well. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you. Thanks, Thank Kathy. You. Thanks. Bye. 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 Bye.